minus four. Okay, x minus four squared plus ah, which is y plus one equals. 16. Why is it 16 and not 64? Because it's 8 Can I make a confession? The first time I did this, I totally put 8 squared in here. And I was the one who wrote the problem. What is up with, what is wrong with my life? I don't know. So yeah, I fell for my own trap. Shame on me, all right? Shame on me. So yeah, this should be 4 because the diameter is 8, so the radius we need is 4. Okay. All right, we're ready for the next piece. So you now know how to write equations of circles. That's not a big deal. And you can basically graph them. I'll show you that, that skill is set as well in just a minute. Now they say, well, how about if I ask you to write an equation where they give you the center, <laughs> but they don't give you the radius. They give you another point on the circle. That's OK. So now instead, you have to find the thing that we're missing still. What do we still need? The we need the radius. So the first thing we have to do is use the distance formula use the distance formula to find the radius so r is going to equal square root of 3 minus 0 squared mm -hmm. Negative 5 minus 0 squared. So I'm solving for number 2 at this point with you guys. So we get radius is equal to the square root, and that's going to be 9 plus 25, which is the square root of 34. All right, so now it's just business as usual. We're going to substitute this into our equation for the circle. Mr. Is it negative three? Uh, yes, a negative three minus zero is just negative three. And when you square negative three, you need to put parentheses around it. The trouble is, you're so used to doing it in a calculator, you're trusting whatever that calculator says. If you type this to a calculator, it's going to square the, excuse me, if you type this into a calculator the way I've written it right here, it'll square the number and then make it negative. Because it says, oh, PEMDAS says parentheses, exponents, then multiplication, division, right, and then add and subtraction. This is multiplying this term by negative 1. That's what the calculator thinks you want it to do. Well, this says exponents first, then multiply. So it's saying, oh, you want me to square, then change it to negative. And you're like, no, I want you to square this negative number. You see how I'm telling you to square a negative now? Yes. So negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. So that's why this becomes 9. Negative 5 squared is 25. So our equation will be uh, x, and then our center is at negative 3. So it becomes x plus 3, quantity squared, plus y plus 5, quantity squared, equals 34. Because the square root of 34, when you square it, just becomes 34. Those terms cancel out, right? The operation of taking the square root and squaring are inverse to each other, so they cancel each other out. So we get the absolute value of 34, which is just positive 34. So this is my equation. Good to go? All right, so this type of problem is going to be pretty easy for you, yes? Find the radius using distance formula, plug it in, and write your equation. We're not solving for anything. Page turn. Oh, last page. There we go. I was like, oh, I don't remember all this stuff. Okay, so this is where the stuff we talked about uh, during the homework, this is where it's going to come home and really help us, okay? So here, they want us to complete the square for each equation and then graph the circle. The first one is pretty straightforward. It's almost in standard form as it is. What do you need to do to this so it becomes in standard form? So it looks like what we expect. Yeah, add the 4 to the other side. We're pretty much done. So you're going to get x squared plus y squared equals 4. There's my equation. And now we're ready to graph this thing. OK, it's ready to go. My question is, what's the radius? 4. No, radius no, is not 4. Oh, it's um, two? 2. Remember, this is the radius squared. Yeah. Oh, yeah. OK. Kay. And the center, of course, is where? 
What's the center, folks? Zero, zero, because there's no numbers in next to them. Okay, so this is going to be a pretty easy circle to graph. I'll wait for you to draw your crosshairs, your, your axes, axes. Now, the first thing you should mark is your center. All right, so there's me marking my center. Got it, good boy. Next, we need to move out. How far in every direction do we need to go? Um, two, two, units. two units. So, guys, here's the secret to graphing circles. You ready? You just move up two, down two, left two, and right two. Feels like you're doing a secret code on a video game. Three. Up two, two right two. two. For this particular problem, we're going up, down, left, and right these, this distance. So watch me do it. Here we go. I'm moving left two units, putting a mark. Moving right two units, putting a mark. Moving up two units, putting a mark. Putting down two units, putting a mark. So for this particular shape, we're moving two units in every direction. So it feels like I'm kind of just marking off the cardinal directions, right? Yes. Those are my guideposts. And now I'm just going to put a circle that passes through all of those points. And the first time you do it, it's going to look terrible. Just get over it. You'll get better and better. You go, oh, I learned how to draw the circle now. Wow. If you want somebody to really help you learn how to guide and draw a nice even circle, besides me, talk with Miss Sari. So Miss Sarai also, uh, oh. she's an art teacher, right? That's what she does. So she can help you with this. Now, 3A is easy. Look at 3B. B for beast. Look at that thing. <laughs> what do we need to do to that thing? We got to rewrite this so that it's in standard form. So first things first to do so, I'm going to write the notes over here. First, we need to group terms with the same variable. So I'm going to rewrite this so the terms have the same variable next door to each other. So x squared plus 8x. And then I'm going to put plus, and I'm going to put some space in. That plus, and I'm going to put an underline, meaning I need something here. All right, so that's just an imp that's a placeholder for us. And then, again, we're going to do the same thing for the y's. So we get y squared minus 14y plus, and then whatever we need. Last thing I'm going to do, I'm going to move the constant to the other side of the equation. So I'm going to get equals negative 40. Okay, So that's my first step. Second, we need to complete the square. To help you with that, I'm going to draw the box. There's an algebraic method to this as well, which we'll discuss after the fact. All right, so we're going to fill in the information they've given us for the x's. Why haven't we ever learned this? I don't know. I would have taught it to you if I had the opportunity. Oh, I have the opportunity. I am teaching it to you. Yep. So I don't know what happened beforehand, but you're learning it now. So that's the important thing. So the values we know, this is x squared. And we learned that that 8x right there has to be evenly distributed in both of these boxes so that our sides are the same, right? That the sides are uniform. So that's going to be what in each one? Four. Thank you. All right. So you're telling me basically whatever this number is, you always divide it by two. Okay. So to get my side lengths, this will be x. This will be x. This will be plus 4 and plus 4. And so the number we need to complete the square will be what? 18. Very good. Okay, I'll leave that alone for now. Uh, could you do the Y as well? Don't wait for me. Don't work without me. You don't need me for this.
All right, so we're down to our third step. You ready for the third step? Yes. I know in Texas we're not used to going past the two step, but we're going to have to this time, all right? Mm -hmm. We're okay with that? Sure. All right. Y'all ready? <laughs> so I'm now going to write this same equation I wrote in number one, but now I'm going to include the number we put in there. And then we're going to factor this thing. H? We're not there yet. Didn't you, didn't you write, write, what is it say? Add one? Add to equation. Oh, I can't read. Mm, we'll blame the handwriting. Now notice, we added 16 to one side, so we need to add it to? Please be careful. If you don't do that, you're totally going to get the wrong answer. And the 49 as well. Yep. All right. So the third step says add to the equation. And now we can factor this. What are the factors going to be for the first term? Look at your square. It tells you at the side lengths. Yep. X plus 4 times X plus 4. That's the purpose of this part. It tells you the side lengths. Cool. You got them. So y minus 7 times y minus 7. And now let's clean up uh, the right side as well since we're here. What's negative 40 plus 16 plus 49? 25? Doris says 25. Can somebody confirm? Yep. Nice work, Doris. N quick on the draw. Nicely done. All right, so we have now factored it. So we can write this now as just a term being squared, correct? So this becomes x plus 4 squared plus y minus 7 squared equals 25. All right, so it feels like a long process. I can do these steps now personally without completing the square. I can just look at this and already know what to do with it, guys. See if you can figure out what my secret is. What am I going to do to this 8? Split in half, Split in half and, divide, and, then multi and then square that. That's what goes here, right? So that's what I have to add to this side of my equation. So I already know I have to add 16 and I have to add 49. So I do that first and I get 25. Now, rewriting my equation. Look, you can actually skip all of this work and just go right to right down here. Because if what happens to this 8? What does it become on the side? So when I rewrite it, all I have to do, this is really just b divided by 2, isn't it? x plus, and this number here is b. That means this number must be b divided by 2, right? Same thing here. Negative 14 becomes negative 7. So I just take these numbers, I divide them by 2. They're, they're going to go down here. That's my shortcut, skipping all this stuff. The only reason I'm having you do this is so you know where the shortcut comes from that's way more valuable to me that you understand the process and how to do it. Okay, so we have our equation, yes? Yes. Uh, let's go ahead and write it up over here so we can look at it. So, and we have to keep going back and forth. Oh. And now I need two things. I need you to tell me what the radius is and what the center is. Sideways. Almost done. This is the last thing for today, guys. I promise. What's the radius? Uh, 14, what? What's the radius? Three? The radius. It'll be the square root of 25, which is? Five. Right, you have to the square root in the center. Uh, four, seven. Close. Seven. Switch those. Negative, seven. Negative four. Oh. Positive seven. All right. So last thing, now that we have our center and our radius, I want you to graph this. So let's go ahead. It's going to be, it's going to be mainly in the right quadrant. So go over four units, one, two, three, four, and go up seven units, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's my center. And now I need to move out five units in every direction. 
one, two, three, four, uh, four, five. There we go. And seven, one, two, three, four, five. Good. And then down five right there. So here are all my points. It's a little bit skewed, but here is my circle. As soon as you have that written down, you are free to go. Thank you so much for your time today.